All right, let's get stuff going. So, I obviously have to get into laying out the picture before I even get into this one. Um, so, I recently decided I was going to start doing some reaction content, which will be shows as well as like any general videos or other ones that I still want to do. And then once I get better internet, because right now I've, I've explained, I don't need to go into it right now, but it's just go into, I, I don't have the best internet right now, moving around a bunch, and in, either until I just kind of say fuck it and get uh, upgraded to internet where I'm at now, or I wait until I move. I'm not going to have the best internet to do stuff like streaming, so I'm just mostly sticking to pre-recorded content. I just bumped my cat in the face. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do going into the reaction content. Obviously, there's still shows that I want to watch. I talked about I wanted to uh, watch Kaiju number eight, Free Rin. I, I told I told Kenmano, shout out to Kenmano, I'd watch Bungo Stray Dogs. That's uh, currently on my set list, and then we'll see about other upcoming shows. I really want to watch that Dadan Don Don show, or whatever the name is pronounced. And uh, Go Go Loser, Loser Ranger, that's the only one that's going on my channel right now. I've got a couple episodes recorded. i got to upload the episode two and three for at this point i only have episode one at the moment and obviously i'm gonna do fairy tale 100 years quest when the anime comes out so for right now i figured it would make sense to do a rewatch of the main series i'll put that up as fully available to everybody it's not gonna have anything to do with the membership so it's like if you want to just see my you know re-reaction i guess of older episodes and see what you know just having some commentary that's going to be this for you and for anybody who either is interested you know that is new ah, my hair is so i gotta get a haircut or from my hat my hair is so annoyingly all over the place um you can just kind of check this out and see if you'd be interested in checking out my other content reviewing stuff and uh reaction content so for now we're gonna go into just watching again re-watching some of the episodes and I'm going to try, I'm going to try to get three episodes done today and I'll split those up into three bits to put up throughout the week. And we'll just kind of like go from there and figure out all the stuff we want to look at. I'll probably do the filler ones as well, just because I feel like it's at least interesting commentary to go into the, like the filler episodes and to see what exactly is going on with that. So let's begin. I know I'm going to get a nostalgia wave just from like the whole opening bit and hearing the, the openings. I... I'll listen to the probably like each opening the first time whenever they, they shift to the new openings and then every once in a while I'll just be like listening to it. But otherwise I'll kind of skip through it. I know it'll hurt me a little bit to skip through some of them because some of them are so damn good. But for now we're just going to be looking at exactly the, I guess looking at, we're going to be watching um, the, the first episode of Fairy Tale. You know, way back when, when it came out uh, just as a little bit of pre-opening uh, lore I remember, I still remember the, I don't remember the name of the website entirely. I think it was just like anime, watch anime.tv. I'm trying to remember the exact website. It had this whole, like, I remember it very, very strongly because most um, anime websites back in the day when you would watch stuff off of, you know, they were, they were, they, they were illegally uploaded websites, you know, the pirated websites and stuff. And almost every single one had like a black or gray background. But the one that I watched a lot on was like yellow, and that's one of the reasons I remember it so well. And you know, my my normal looking zone was in uh, here. Let me, I'm gonna lower a little bit. Tartarus wants to be in the shot, just a little bit. Just have his ears in there. Um, I remember just going through like the whole magic adventure fantasy genre tags. Those were like my main things to go into, and I still remember. Um, scrolling down and seeing fairy tale at one point it was like right when the anime started and I, I remember very well because like the first time I tried to watch it it didn't work and then I was like whatever and then I came back to it I think like a week or so later and then watched it again and was actually able to get into it and I, I remember too at the time they were like right into Edelis and I looked on the wiki and I remember seeing like it showed Wendy Gajil and Natsu against the Dorna on him and I was just like so confused because obviously I didn't know who Wendy was at the time. And I was like, what is going on? They're like fighting a mech dragon. It's so cool. So we'll get into it. Obviously, it's going to have the whole opening bit and we'll see just how things go. And also, we'll talk about some of the stuff that's different. <laughs> I see Tartarus making faces. Uh, see some of the parts that are different in the anime compared to the manga. 
Oof. That old narrator, man. I really love the old style opening too. It is such a good feel. I always liked it like early on it wasn't too certain of where some of the guilds were placed and then as the series progressed we got more understanding I was just like set okay no uh Lamia scale and blue pegasus they're going to be here and there is I I think it's is it in Bosco not in Bosco crap I'd have to relook at the map of where um I can I have enough time during this beautiful opening to pull up the bit of where Lamia scale is, because they leave the country very briefly when they go to to, to go to over to uh, Lamia scale. Ooh, it's a great opening. I still think Fairy Tale has one of the best first openings of any anime I've seen. Obviously, like the anime itself. Obviously, you know, you know, it's like oh, the this music is subjective, but. Is it seven or is it in Bosco? I think it's in Bosco. I'm gonna look up the map real quick. Um, the the openings are subjective, but the like I feel like there's not a lot of people that would disagree that Fairy Tale Opening One is one of the best ones. It is in Bosco. Okay. I was just trying to remember some of like the specifics. Carters. See, he wants to he wants to watch he maybe he have to get him glasses or something and it's like if you watch the opening at the very start i wonder if you like assumed like because i never thought about it i wonder if you watched that first bit and thought like natsu fighting urza meant like urza was a villain or something but then also, it was it was always interesting to me that they changed the first bit of the opening of, of the show itself and have like Natsu actually is the first bit shown. Because if you're if you're an anime only, the first person we obviously see is Ultir, and it, you know it's Seagaz Shalom. I mean, but obviously we don't see uh, Natsu as the first person we run into. I mean, he's the main character, but it's like Mishima. Mishima did the same thing with um, with Wraith Master. He showed Shiba before he ended up showing Haru. Mm -hmm. Haritel's music too is absolutely stellar. But I, I I always forget the guy's name. He he also does the music for Naruto. Like that guy is an absolute gem of of just OSTs. Like it's crazy that that guy just. Banger after banger when it comes to music. I like I don't know a lot of the music names when it comes to series of the you know the composers, but like as far as I know, like I don't know anybody who has as many like big names like that. I'm sure there probably are, but I mean I feel like this dude have hitting Naruto and Fairy Tail both, like two very big shonen series, and on top of that having massively renowned uh likings when it comes to the music like bleach bleach has great music too but i don't i don't know the if there's like any like single composer that really has as much like impact on it that, that i know of i could be wrong i like how a lot of people's like opinion when it comes to lucy like if you're early early this is like the, the only thing that people seem to remember if they don't go past like episode five is they they think that this is her throughout the entire series and part of it is that she's just new inexperienced you know she's somebody that's just trying to look for schemes and do stuff on her own i always thought that lucy early too like scenes like this or she's trying to get discounts like trying to just play on to a dude as well as um as well as bits like when you see um you see like her trying to like shortchange Natsu and Happy on their on their cuts for missions. To me has always felt more like 
seeing her dad's side of things because obviously with Jude he was like a, a you know a pretty big businessman so it's always made sense to me if like Lucy like you would see bits of her kind of poke through where it's it's like her dad's um you're seeing it more of like from the side of somebody raised from a businessman like this kind of thing you know what I mean See, Bora, Bora is like, I feel like Bora is just a really, a really putrid dude. Obviously, he's like, he, you know, he's tricking all these women to enslave them and stuff and like sell them into the slavery market. But it's like, for this to be your chapter one villain, it's actually really crazy. Like, he's, he's just scum. He's just a scummy guy with, like, no real redeeming qualities. There's nothing really about him to kind of, like, walk away. Because when you look at other, like, episode one bad guys, I feel like he's one of, like, the worst. At least that I can think of in a shonen. I'm, I'm sure you can have, like, a setting where some guy's like, Yeah, in the first episode. Uh, you know, my job is to capture all these babies to, to sell their bones for, like, a ritual where we also sacrifice puppies or something. So it's outright just, like, you add extra stuff just to make them even worse. And it's like you're just making them bad to be bad. But Bora, to me, has always just come across as such a such a shitty dude. And they, they tone it down a lot in the anime, too. In the anime, he just seems like he's... A creep I like they don't really play as much into like how much of a bad dude he is like he's trying to brand Lucy in the first episode or in the first chapter I don't think do they have the brand in the first episode I'm trying to remember that Here's another, this is another funny bit because like people think like, well, Natsu must be a glutton like all these other main characters like Goku and Luffy because of this bit when he's like starving. And it's like Natsu really doesn't have any like glutton scenes or anything like that. Oh my god, hang on. I gotta turn this off. This is pissing me off. I don't need that to ding every five seconds. Eating like full tomatoes though is pretty crazy. Maybe that's where it stemmed from. It's not all the plates. It's like this man is eating whole tomatoes. I don't know anybody else who does that. And Lucy at the start, she's just a fan. She just wants to join the guild because they're cool. I like they had the whole bit in one of the OVAs. Oh my god. One of the OVAs that, um, let me move this too. Where they like had Lucy in like in the past get saved. I think it was by Lucy, but it's, you know, it's the idea of a fairy tale wizard saves her. And so she ends up having like a whole idolization of them. I think that's pretty cool. This was always cool to me too. I, I really like that early on, especially, there's not really an understanding of how big of a deal dragons are. And that's one of those things obviously you wouldn't get to until way later in the series. Like you don't even really get a dragon until Acnologia. So it's like you have, uh, you have, so just kind of like talking to them, you don't even know what exactly these guys are fully capable of. Luckily, without everybody seeing it, I can. If people freaking want to spam me up, I can easily type fast out. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Hang on. Really getting on my nerves with 
notifications. How do I turn? I'm going to need to turn some of this off really quick. I will remember to turn it back on hopefully later and I don't randomly get called for something important. But as of right now, I can't I can't handle all them damn pings. Why do I, I got to have so many? I was going to say, like, I can't imagine, though. It's not like they don't get along. They don't treat each other anything like they would later at all. Like, Natsu kind of just treats her as just like, yeah, cool, you're in the guild. You know, that's great. But, I mean, like, doesn't mean I fuck with you too much. Because, um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, just like, they end up talking to each other in just a way that it's like they're work colleagues in theory, but it's not like they're close. Because, like, Natsu talks about it too, um, when they're on Mount Hokobe, is that he, he still sees everyone in the guild as family, but it doesn't mean that, like, instantly they get along. Because he even talks about Grey, and Natsu and Grey at this point especially didn't get along. Also, another great bit for Nasu, just like at the start, it's not like he's doing any good guy work inherently. He's just mad that it's like this guy's using the fairy tale name and he's. It's not even like he's tarnishing it because he doesn't know the, the extent of what this guy's up to, but it's just the idea of using the guild's name without being a member for whatever it is. Because that just, that just pisses him off. And Nasu always stands on business, which is a huge plus. It's like, this dude's so rapey. I'm very happy that Bora never got redeemed. Like, again, he's just... He's just an absolute worm. Like, he's... That's one thing that I think series... It's like, you can really tell, like, the tone of... of the fans, especially. It's like, the idea of some of the characters getting redeemed. It's like, when you look at somebody like Gajil, it's good. Gajil didn't really do anything extensively evil. It was just bad. Like, he, he, he amounted to mostly thug stuff. Like, he was, you know, beating people up pretty much for work and just kind of being overall aggressive. But it's not like he was murdering people. It's not like he was kidnapping people like this. Like, this is, like, Bor and his friends are just straight kidnapping and enslaving women. And on top of that, it's clear that they've been doing it for a while. So, you can assume that, like, this isn't their first time. Like, there are women and stuff that are actively, at this point, have, have been victims to him. And you can't just overlook past events. Whereas... Say, like, uh, for instance, I know it's a really big contention one, is Orochimaru. It's, like, kind of, like, almost ignoring all the things he did is really weird and having him just kind of hang out in the village. And it's, like, this dude had, like, what was it, like, a whole island of, like, all these failed experiments and stuff of, like, these children and everybody he's ever put a curse mark on. And it's just, like, how is this man redeemed whatsoever? There's a charm about the early series animation, too. Uh, I like how it looks. I wish that Alvarez had more fluid animation more often because I like the, the general design of it. And I know with 100 Years Quest, I, the, some people like it, some people don't like the, the general look. I think it's going to be one of those things that we don't really have a full opinion on until we actually see stuff in motion. Because we really only have, what, like two, three seconds of Natsu animated and we only have a teaser. Happy really is like no magic, like quantity supply at this point. This dude, I'm still trying to remember this dude's appearance off the top of my head. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit. I'll just cut a little bit out.
Did I get the main character first moment in here? I think Fairy Tale is like one of the best for episode ones just for setting up the main character. I think like they make Natsu look so good in the first episode. That coat that he almost never gets back. And it's really funny too that like even the idea of like Ace versus Natsu is even a conversation for some people when it's like literally the first episode of Fairy Tale is Natsu fighting a fire guy and showing that fighting a fire guy doesn't do anything really for him. And the only time, like, the first time we really get, like, a fire person who's, like, an issue is Zankro. And it's all about how, like, Zankro's god fire is completely different and something way above the general fire and things that Natsu kind of goes about dealing with. And again, Natsu's just standing on business. Indirectly helping a bunch of people from, you know, enslavement. Because this guy decided to, to use the guild's name. Just remembering, I know in the manga, like, you don't get any attack names from Bora. Like, I don't think he has a single name spell. Because he's got, like, the whole prominence typhoon and, and hell prominence in episode one. But it's really just he does, like, a generic fire attack and then Natsu eats it. And then does a roar and then throttles them all with like the mast of the ship and then in the anime they extend the fight out a little bit they do a little bit more just to kind of like make things more obviously more interesting more action-packed for episode one and then like happy even says in the first episode fire doesn't work on him I find it funny that the, the dragon that they use in the background is such a regular looking dragon and then in Mishima becomes like one of the dragon artists like he just has badass looking dragons all the time all very unique all very different really building the picture of them being a very widespread species and race but it's like if you go off of just like Igneo and this dragon it just looks like yeah regular red fire dragon because Rave Master didn't have a lot of crazy dragon designs. He had like the Meal Galuna. That's such a good shot with him just getting up with the orange eyes. They have the Meal Galuna in the Monster Hunter Storm manga lo looked awesome. It was really the start of Mishima's dragon designs being absolutely insane. So it's like when you look at two of like how much more powerful like Natsu and Bora are in the first episode, like Bora loses very quickly in the manga. And then, like, here, like, Natsu decks him, like, halfway across Harjion. He has to get up. He's not even really hurt too much at this point. Obviously, Natsu's just using attacks and, like, techniques. And it's still, it's, like, it's very clear in the manga that, like, Natsu pretty much bodies him almost immediately. And then, it's like, this beam is very impressive. It's very impressive for it, but it doesn't do anything to Natsu. Look at that freaking angular shot. Like, so good. There's this big fireball. And it's again, just like the first episode is literally Natsu getting, you know, no diffing a fire guy. And people are like, oh, Ace versus Natsu. And it's like the whole first bit is like showing how you can't really use fire to fight him. It's like, look at this dragon. This is such a regular looking dragon. It looks like Igneal. Like, it looks like Igneal before Igneal fully evolves. Like, to me, it's, it was like a very early concept design of like Natsu as a dragon and it looks like Kid Igneal because Igneal too early on like he looks more fat and more kind of like older European style dragon and then later he's fucking ripped he's like a jacked dragon looks like he came out of 5Ds hanging out with Red Dragon Archfiend or Red Demon's Dragon if I wonder if that went through at all I don't imagine so. There's going to be random clicks to my other stuff if it recorded through there of like my old setup from like years ago. Ooh, episode one nostalgia. Ooh, so nice. Like I said, that there's a lot of it. I feel like it's going to be a lot more commentary when I get to the hype parts. I can't wait. I can't wait to get to even the first bits of like getting to like Natsu versus Gajil, getting to the fighting festival and just like seeing some of like the parts where the, the blood starts pumping and you just have that tension of 
uh, you know, characters just trying to push through and get everything going, feeling the emotional weight behind everything. Like, just like Lax is screaming at people all the time near the end. It's just so fucking hype, and it just gets me insane. But anyway, we're going to get on to the next one. So let me end this one, and then we'll just move directly into the next step. So see, Tartarus is excited. He wants to get to it. He's ready to eventually get to Mark Gear when we get to that arc. And we get to Tartarus so he can see where his name comes from. I'm sure he, I mean, he, he already knows. He's seen it before. But he wants to, dude, you're going to fall over. He's like trying to roll down and get comfortable. And if I like, I'm just like letting go slowly. So <laughs> he's just trying to get comfy. But it is a goofy cat ass just is about to fall over. But you're fine. Anyway, yeah, solid episode. I, I think Fairy Tales first episode is one of the best um, for pacing, for the music, for setting the characters. Um, as well as, like I said, showing character flaws. I think showing the character flaws early on is really good because then when you look at it way later and you see the development for it, it, it just makes it all the more, all the more valuable in my opinion. But anyway, we'll get into the next one.